So does buying an investment property without needing your personal income or credit score sound like something you'd be interested in? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be covering what a DSCR loan is and how you can achieve that without needing any of your own personal income, W-2, or tax returns to be able to buy this property. Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Shane Moynihan. I'm a local real estate agent and investor based out of Keene, New Hampshire. So if you're someone that's looking to buy, sell, or in this case, probably invest in a property around this area, please feel free to hit me up. My contact info is kind of everywhere. Just give a quick look and you'll find it. And I'd love to connect with you, kind of find out how I can help you, how we can help each other, and really see what benefits we can get and hopefully start making you some money, especially if you're looking at this video. Chances are you're probably wanting to invest. So let's dive right into the topic today of what a DSCR loan is. So first thing I'm going to address, of course, is the obvious. What does DSCR stand for? It means debt service cover ratio. So banks will be strictly looking at how much money the investment property produces per year and compare that to how much the debt service is going to cost to cover per year. And most banks, and probably for your own sake too, want to see at least a minimum of a one for this DSCR ratio. And the reason being is because if it's just a one, that is strictly meaning that it's just going to basically break even. It's not necessarily going to be making you money because you're just making enough of an income to cover what it costs to service the debt of this property. So the minimum, I believe, used to be around 1.2, but in recent years, it's changed a little bit and they've become more lenient. But if you're looking for an investment property, you probably want to be looking at at least 1.2 to, if not 1.5. Of course, the higher the number, the better, because that means you're going to be making way more money than it costs to actually service the debt of this property. So how do you actually calculate for the DSCR loan? It's pretty simple. You're going to take the net operating income and then divide it by the debt service cost. So say you have a property that produces net operating income of $100,000 per year, and the debt service costs $60,000 per year. So you simply take $100,000 divided by $60,000, and you get 1.67 roughly, and that means that you are actually making money on this because you are making more than it costs to just service the debt. Of course, in this example, you'd be roughly making the $40,000 per year. So what are the pros of a DSCR loan? Well, of course, the biggest one is you don't actually have to qualify from your personal income. You don't need a W-2. You don't need tax returns. You don't need any of that. They're going to be looking strictly at the property, which is really all you care about. And that's why it's great that that's all the bank cares about because the property is going to be a thing that is covering the debt. These loans also usually have a faster application time and closing time, which is, you know, great for everyone involved. And then the last thing that is pretty cool about these is you can commit to multiple properties at a time because of course each loan is getting approved per property. So unlike your personal loans where you have to keep showing you make enough income to be able to pay for these, you're simply basing it off each property. If this property can pay for the loan, well then it passes, which is awesome. Now for the cons, there's really only one or two big cons. The first one is you need typically 20 to 25% down payment, depending on what bank you use. And that is because it's just a riskier loan because the bank is absolutely passing this or failing this for your loan due to what the property produces for income. So it's a little bit riskier for them and they're not actually basing off you as a borrower as much as just strictly the investment property. And now for the other con, you're typically gonna be paying a higher interest rate for this than you would be say for like a personal home loan. And again, this is because it's for an investment property. You're not buying it for yourself, you're buying it to invest and make money in. So the bank sees that as a little bit riskier because Chances are, if it comes down to bare tax and you're either going to be paying your house mortgage or your investment property mortgage, that's the way the bank looks at it. Chances are you're going to want to stay with a home instead of being homeless. But that basically sums up what a DSCR loan is, debt to service cover ratio, and how you can use it to your benefit to buy an investment property. Again, you're going to need a larger down payment. But... You're also not going to be having to prove that you can pay for this yourself. You're going to be showing, hey, this investment property, which is 
what I'm buying will pay for itself and more. And that's why you want to get that number above the one for the ratio so that you can actually be making money off of this. Of course, you can buy it at a one and just hope you get like appreciation, make money on that or raise rents in the future. But chances are you want to make money from day one like most people would. So if at any point this video has provided you with some value, I'd really appreciate a like and hitting that subscribe button as I do come out with these weekly real estate related videos. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, or maybe you're looking to buy some property here in New Hampshire, feel free to hit me up. I'd love to connect with you. I always love making new connections. Real estate's kind of my thing. I really take passion in it and pride and I'm an investor myself. So I do know my way around some of these things, but um, until next time.